So there's one more feature about Redux that we need to cover before we start tying it into a React application, and that's Redux middleware. If you're familiar with Express.js at all, if you've ever built a Node.js application with Express, Redux middleware works a lot like that. A piece of Redux middleware will intercept every single action that comes through, and then it can either modify that action, or it can actually cancel that action by simply not calling any of the next things, any of the next middleware. So we're going to go ahead and make a basic middleware here. And then in the next video, we're going to cover how middleware is also the solution for async actions in Redux, like Ajax, XHR requests. So what I did is I rolled back the code to back when we had a really simple store with just a single digit value. Since we're not going to really mess with reducers, I can even minimize that reducer code. And I can even get rid of this store subscribe code right here. So let's get rid of that. So we're simply creating a store and we have some actions that we're firing off. So to add middleware, it's very simple. You simply add a third argument to the create store command. I have middleware right there. Of course, I haven't made it yet. So let's pull in apply middleware from Redux. And then we'll go const middleware equals apply middleware. So then any middleware we want to add in, we simply add into this function as argument. So let's go ahead and create our first middleware here. And we'll go with a very basic logger. And then here's the syntax for creating middleware. Now, you're probably not going to need to create middleware, but here's how you do it if you want to. Most middleware you can actually pull in as an NPM package and just use it by just throwing it into apply middleware. We're going to create a simple middleware here for a logger. So it goes store. You basically do a chain of thunks. Next, and then action. And then this is actually our middleware function that will fire every single time. So I can just console log action fired. And then the action. So there you go, I'll save it, it'll reload. And then I didn't add it in, so let's add that in. Logger. There we go, forgot to add the logger. There we go. Action fired, action fired, and it's showing me the type of action. And also, it's no longer, let me go ahead and get that store listener in there again so you can see if it's actually firing. Uh, store subscribe. Store change. You'll notice right now, this state is not ever changing. The actions are firing but we're never calling the next middleware, so we're essentially terminating every action before anything takes place. So to call the next, we simply fire next and give it the action that was passed in. There you go, next action. And now the reducer is actually firing. We're calling the next action, there's no more middleware, so it's gonna go ahead and run the reducer. So then we're seeing that we're actually changing the store after the action fires. We could also modify this action if we wanted to. Let's say action type. Let's make sure it's always decrement. Ah, if I could type. There we go. So now, though it says ink, because up here it's ink, then down here it's actually 0, negative 1, negative 2, negative 3. We're actually firing uh, decrement every single time. So there we go. We can actually modify things. I'll get rid of that. We'll keep ink. And let's go ahead and create a second type of middleware. This time we'll create an error handler. Let's create error. Let's add error to the list. And then in this case, we'll just try the next action. If that fails, then we'll actually log. There we go. Ah! And then we'll actually pass the error in there. So let's go ahead and make something here that's gonna error. Let's make a reducer here. Let's go else if action type equals E, then we're going to throw a new error. There we go, and let's go ahead, then at the very end, let's dispatch an E. Was that capital E? Yes, it was. So I'm basically creating an error here, and there we go. Ah, the error caught it. Uh, so there we go, the action fired of type E. This is my logger middleware. This is my error handler middleware. And then the actual error never fired. We tried to fire it, but nothing happened. So all the other ones went through just fine and that's how you'd create an error handler middleware. Now, of course, these would all live in their own files and whatnot. So in the next video, we're gonna actually get into handling asynchronous actions with middleware.